Hello everyone and welcome to all my dear students. Today is your social class, right? So today in this class, we are going to talk about the our province. And today in this class, we are going to talk about the last one province, province number six. Okay, before to discuss about the province number seven, and my dear students, in our previous class, in previous week, we had discussed the province number five and province number six. And while we discussed the different provinces, province number one, two, three, four, five, and six, and we had learn very useful information of different province like uh, what's the total area what's the total number of population religious size tourist areas uh, major cities mountains lakes rivers which is available in a different province and uh, as we all know that according to the new constitution which was formulated on 3rd of 2007 to become somewhat. So according to the new constitution, altogether there are seven provinces, right? Altogether there are seven provinces according to the new constitution, which was formulated on 3rd of 2007 to become somewhat. So about the province number one, two, three, four, five, six, we had detailed discussed in the previous class, uh, before previous class, right? So. Uh, in this now today in this class we are going to talk about the last one province province number seven okay uh okay before to discuss about some of the important points of province number seven and province number seven is also known as a sudur Pashim province my dear students you have to remember you have to point out that province number seven is also known as a sudur Pashim province all right you can Copy down your copy. Okay, my dear students, uh, before to discuss about the province number seven, and you can see on the slide there is a new map of Nepal. There is a new map of Nepal. Okay, before to discuss about the new map of Nepal, my dear students, all of you, please, you can take your copy and pin. You can take your copy and pin to point out some of the important useful information of new map of Nepal. And just I told you that before to discuss what's the total area, total population, religious sites of uh, province number seven, what are the some of the name of the mountain peaks, right? So before that, I am going to share some of the useful information about the new map of Nepal so that my dear students, just I told you, with your copy and pen, you have to write down you have to point out some of the important dates to clarify the new map of nepal and my dear students i think so you had also heard in the news also and before 45 days ago before around 45 days ago and there was the issues of nepal india border before around 45 days ago there was an issue of nepal india border so that's why finally here is a new map of nepal after solving the issue of nepal india border the nepal government officially the nepal government officially published this map that's a new map of nepal and you can see in the western part of the map western part of the map there are some parts are expanded after after the discussion after solving the issue of nepal india border so my dear students in the map you can see very carefully because this is a new map of nepal in the western part you can see in top yeah in the western part of that map you can see the expanded area expanded part in the western part of this new map of nepal so uh, my dear students just uh, once again i want to repeat that before around uh, 45 days ago there was an issue of nepal india border and at that time my dear students at that time india published a new map india published a new map including historical area of nepal as your part of india before 45 days ago around india 
publish a new map including historically an area of Nepal as your part. It means Nepal, India claims it to be your part. Mainly Limpia Dura is your the issue of Limpia Dura, Kalapani and Lipu Lake. So that India claims that India claims that Limpia Dura, Kalapani and Lipu Lake are the parts of India. And after claiming by the India, then the Nepal government and Nepalese people raise the voice that raise the voice against the India. The reason is because India published a new map including Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the parts of the India. And after then, the Nepalese people, Nepal government, different organization raised their voice against the government of Nepal. All right. So, and after then, and there are some proof, there are some evidence that Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the parts of the Nepal. So, I am going to tell you what are the truths, what are the events that we can clarify. Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lakes are the parts of Nepal. There are some truths, some facts, some evidence. And from the evidence, from the facts, we can verify, we can prove that Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are, are also the parts, the area of the Nepal. Okay, my dear students, now you can write on, write on your copy and the, there are the two treaty were happened at a time. First one is Sugauli Treaty. Or in Nepal, it, uh, it is called Sugauli Sunday, Sugauli Treaty. And Sugauli Treaty was signed on 2nd December 1816. So my dear students, once again, I want to repeat the date of Sugauli Treaty. So from that treaty also, it we can clarify, we can prove that Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the Parts area of Nepal. So, Sugol Treaty in Nepali, it is called Sugoli Sunday, and the, this treaty was signed on 2nd December 1816. 2nd December 1816. And in that treaty, there is mention that Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the parts, the area of Nepal in Sugol Treaty. On 2nd December 1816, it was signed. And in that treaty, there was clearly written that Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the area, the parts of Nepal. All right. And my dear students, the next treaty also, Mahakali Treaty, or in Nepali, it is called Mahakali Sandhi. And from Mahakali Treaty also, uh, special this Mahakali Treaty was signed on February 12, 1996. My dear students, please, you can note down in your copy. One second, I want to repeat because this is a very important treaty. And from that treaty, we can clarify, we can, we can say, we can prove that Limpia Dura, Kalapani, Lipu Lake are also the, one of the area of Nepal. So Mahakali Treaty, which was signed on February 12, 1996. And at that time, this Michael Treaty was signed between the government of Nepal and government of India regarding the development of the water set of Mahakali River. And my dear students, as you all know that the Mahakali River, which is located in the western part of Nepal. So in the map, uh, you can see there, the, in the map, in the western part of, the, of that map, the Mahakali River is located. So at a time, Mahakali Treaty was signed on February 12, 1996, between the go government of Nepal and government of India regarding for the development, for the development of a water set of Mahakali River. And also in that treaty, in that, in the Mahakali Treaty also, there was agreements in that treaty, in Mahakali Treaty, there was agreements for an integrated development of barriers, dams, and hydropower for mutual cooperation between India and Nepal. So my dear students, once again, I want to repeat that point, repeat that sentence. In Mahakali Treaty, there was agreements 
which types of agreements the agreements for and integrated development integrated means the development joint development so integrated development of barriers dams and hydropower for to create mutual cooperation between the nepal government and india so that at a time in michael treaty it was agreement for the development between the two countries or to create a mutual understanding mutual cooperation between the nepal government and nepal india so that's why uh, from that treaty also from that michael treaty also we can prove that there is mention according to the michael treaty there is mention that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are also the area of nepal area of nepal all right and my dear students so just uh, i i i told you that about the sugal treaty and michael treaty the two treaties are very important evidence facts that we can say we can prove prove that the three areas the three limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal not the area of india and not only that there are also some other evidence that we can prove that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal so my dear students all of you listen very carefully please uh, you can note down in a copy one second i want to tell you one of the evidence that we can prove limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal okay my dear students in 1903 you can write down in your copy please note down in 1903 in the chinese king dynasty in, in king dynasty in 1903 in 1903 in china chinese king dynasties publish a map publish a map all atlas of china at a time in the chinese king dynasty in 1903 Jawas published a map called World Atlas of China. So in that map, also in the Chinese characters, in the Chinese characters, there is mention that Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the area of Nepal, not the area of India. So my dear students, once again, I want to repeat the one of the fact that we can clarify: Limpia Dura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the area of Nepal. Once again, in 1903, in Chinese. Uh, king dynasty at a time it was published one of the map and the title world atlas of china and in the chinese character there is mention that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal not the area of india all right and also uh, next uh, my dear students once again i want to say the one of the other proof evidence truth that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal so in february 1st 1827 my dear students once again i want to repeat the date in 1st february 1827 in 1st february 1827 there was also published one of the map the title is gural kumau gural kumau the map title the name of the title map title gural kumau was prepared so in that map also there is totally mentioned that it that map clarifies or identifies the river the river coming down from limpia dura as a kali river so that means kali river that means limpia dura is the source of kali river my dear students once again i want to repeat that in 1st february 1827 the one of the map was prepared the title gural kumau the map title and in that map also there was clearly identifies the river coming from coming down from limpia dura as kali river so that means limpia dura is a main origin the source of kali rivers And this is also one of the evidence one of the fact that limpia dura is one of the area of nepal 
all right and also my dear students once again i want to say another fact evidence that clarify limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal so once again the next date you have to write on your copy in april 24 1856 24 april 1856 the another one map was published in 1856 24 april 1856 one of the another map was published by the surveyor general of india so my dear students please you can point out we can listen very carefully 1856 map was published by whom by the surveyor general of india and in that map there is mention that the sketch of nepal and the countries joining in the south west and east also identifies that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal even the the surveyor general of india at a time in 1856 there was published one of the map so indian map also there is mentioned that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the important area of nepal all right and also after then my dear students uh, once again i want to say one of the other fact one of the other evidence that we can prove limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the important area of nepal so Uh, in 2016, become somewhat, my dear students. You can write on place. You can point out. You can write on your copy. It is a very important source that we can clarify. That we can prove that Limpia, Tura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the area of Nepal, not the area of Nepal, India government, right? So, in 2016, become somewhat. In 2016, become somewhat. one of the person i want to say the name of the person dr ratna bhandari in 2016 become somebody so at that time uh, dr ratna bhandari publics one of the article in 2016 become somebody my dear students you can write on a copy in 2016 become somebody dr ratna bhandari published one of the article so in that article also there is mention that limpia dura kalapan and lipu lake are the area of nepal not the area of government of india so my dear students just i told you there are so many facts evidence that we can now we can identify that we can easily prove that limpia dura kalapan and lipu lake are the area the part of nepal not the area of government of india so there are different facts right so okay my dear students once again i want to repeat just just i want to repeat some of the evidence facts to prove that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal not the area of india so i uh, first i started from the sugolu treaty then mahakal treaty and in 1903 uh, in the chinese character there is mention and in the february 1st 1827 also in the title of gurwal kumau the map was prepared in that map also there is mention that the river coming down from the limpia dura as a kali river that means uh, limpia dura is the source the origin of the kali river and in 24 april 1856 also even the surveyor general of india uh, announced that at a time Uh, it means the limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal not the area of the government of india and in 2016 vikram sambhav dr ratna vandari published one of the article in that article also there is mention that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the important area part of nepal government not the area of government of india and also my dear students and even one of the person still alive that's a bhairav rishal still now he is alive and even at a time in 2018 become somebody my dear students this is also one of the important fact one of the important evidence that we can clarify limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal not the area of 
government of India. So in 2018 become somewhat while the virus Rishal, the motor person, still now he's alive. And at a time in 2018 become somewhat uh, while the census was conducted. And my dear students, we all of you know that census means counting the number of population. And in the context of Nepal, in every 10 years, in the context of Nepal, my dear students, census means counting the number of people, counting the number of people in a certain place, in a certain area, that's the meaning of, meaning of census. And, and my dear students, in the context of Nepal, every 10 years, listen, every 10 years, census occurs, gap of 10 years. So at a time in 2018, become somewhat, while the census was conducted, the virus result at a time, he was also engaged in that census. So at a time also, while he was engaged in the census, and at a time from that uh, period of result also clarifies that Limpiadura, Kalapani, and Lipu Lake are the important area of, important parts area of Nepal, not the area of government of India. So that's also one of the evidence. And Bhairav of Rishal just I told you, still now he's alive and uh, my dear students, I think also you had, uh, you know about of Hirof Rishal while, while you hear the news, yeah, in the television also, we uh, hear the news from the news also, yeah, of Hirof Rishal, it means still he's alive and uh, he, at a time in 2018, he was totally engaged and he also clarifies proof that Limpia Dura, Kalapani and Lipulik are the important area of Nepal. So my dear students, I have mentioned your new map of Nepal, new map of Nepal, because just I told you that around 45 days ago, it means uh, India uh, claimed that, India claimed that Limpia, Dura, Kalapan, and Lipu Lake are their one parts. So that's why while India claims the Nepal government, Nepalese people and different organizations raise the, raise the voice against Nepal, government India, that Limpia, Dura, Kalapan, and Lipu Lake are the area of Nepal, not the area of government of Nepal. Okay, this is uh, the very useful information, facts, evidence for you. Okay, there's a uh, map of Nepal, new map of Nepal. Okay, after then now, my dear students, now, once again, we are going to continue. We are going to continue now, province number seven. Now, some of the important points I have mentioned here. Like a provision of five and six, just in the previous week, in the previous class, we had discussed about the province number six, five and six, right? So in the province number six, you can see in the slide, province number seven. Now, Sudur Pasim province. Province number seven is also known as a Sudur Pasim province. Now, okay, by the students, now you can see the slide, and also you can copy down in your copy. So now what's the total area after province number seven and like the province number one, two, three, four, five, six in every province and certain area are, are occupied. So province number seven or Sudur Pasim province also occupied the area, the total area of the province number seven, 19,539 square kilometer in percentage, 13 percentage, all right? And after then uh, the population of the total number of population of province number seven or Sudur Pasim province. Now let's see what is the uh, total number of population. Total number of population in province number seven in the Sudur Pasim. The total population about 25 lakhs 52,000. Around 25 lakhs 52,000 in percent 9.6 percentage. The total population occupied by province number seven or Sudur Pasim province, right? Okay, after then, my dear students, you can see the next point here, major caste. And, and just I told you that Nepal is rich in culture, tradition, festivals. And as we all know that in Nepal, different people for a different religions. And according to different religions, uh, they celebrate a different types of festivals. They have certain social norms and values, right? So that Nepal is rich in culture, tradition, customs, right? So. Uh, some of the major caste of the province number seven, a uh, major caste uh, of Nepalese people, uh, province number seven, 
like Taru, Kami, and Chetru, Brahmin, Thakur, etc., are some of the major caste of Nepalese people. And my dear students, uh, for your kind information, uh, while you discuss about the major caste, and some of the caste are repeated in the different provinces, like uh, Chetru, Brahmin, Thakur, are the common caste uh, in the different provinces, position one, two, three, four, five, six. It means while we compare the different provinces, number one, two, three, four, five, six, we can find out the common caste, common caste, some of the common caste in different provinces, number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So, okay, some major caste of Nepalese people. And after the uh, next point is their food crops. Now, oh, okay, my dear students. So while we discussing the provision of five six, not only five six, while we started this content, our provinces short introduction from started from one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So in different provinces, uh, the food crops are similar common there. The reason is in every class I told you that the reason is because Nepal is raised in agricultural sector. Yeah. So it means maximum the Nepalese people are engaged in agricultural profession, major profession. More than 50% is the Nepalese people are engaged in agricultural profession. So the food crops are common there, like in province number seven also, the paddy, uh, wheat, potato are some of the common similar food crops, food grains. Uh, in province number seven, in six also, common there, uh, common there uh, in six also like wheat, potato, Paddy, rice are common food crops in the different province. Yeah. Okay, after then the cash crops are here. Cash crops uh, are also like a jute is here, sugar cane, oil seeds. And my dear friends, so once again, I want to repeat that the jute, sugar cane, oil seeds are also some of the common cash crops here. Yeah, so, uh, for your kind information, once you can remember the portion of previous week. Once you have to remember, let's remind the portion, the contents of previous week. And in the previous week, in the previous class, we had discussed a provision of five and six. And while we discuss provision of five and six, I think so this jute, sugarcane, oil, seeds, also the common gas crops. Uh, while we discuss in provision of five and six, also there are mentioned, there are given the Cash crops, jute, sugarcane in provision of five and six. And once again, here the major cash crops of province number seven, right? And after then, some of the major cities of province number seven. And major cities means that's indicate the business centers. Yeah, major cities are popular for the transaction of goods and services for the business purpose. Yeah, business as a transaction of goods and services. So uh, different uh, cities of Province Number Seven, like Dongari and Stikapur, Kanchanpur, Dadalras, Silgari, etc., are some of the major cities. And just I tell you, these cities are for the transaction, for uh, the transaction of goods and services, right? So these are the some of the major cities of Province Number Seven or Sudur Pasim Province. And uh, after then, uh, my dear students, you can see the next slide now here. And in this slide, there are also some of the remaining points of the province number seven. That means the Sudur Pasim province. Okay. And uh, here is in the first point on this slide, you can see here some of the tourist areas. And uh, by the students, once again, I want to repeat that in every province, one, two, three, four, five, six, in every province, there are some of the tourist areas. Tourist areas means that helps to attract the tourists, helps to increase the number of tourists and increment the number of tourists. As we all know that it helps to develop the nation, helps to earn the foreign currency or for the economically development of the nation as well as to get different opportunities by the Nepalese people. So in this province number seven also, there are some of the tourist areas and some tourist areas are Khaptad and Gokuleshwar, Siddhavaga and Godagodi Lake are some of the famous tourist areas. So it means in that place, people 
especially the foreign people, the tourists visit there. That's why to observe there, to observe there, to research, to study there, right? So, my dear students, you can mention. You have to remember some of the areas, some of the tourist areas uh, that helps to attract the tourists in province number seven or Sudur Pashim province. All right. And after then, uh, my dear students, uh, now districts are there. You know, the name of the districts occupied by the province number seven. And in every province, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. In every province, a uh, certain number of districts are occupied because uh, according to the new constitution uh, in Nepal, there are only seven provinces. Yeah. So each and every province occupied certain number of districts. So province number seven also occupied some districts so i am going to read the name of districts occupied by province number seven okay my dear students you can see the slide also that the first districts bajang bajura acham doti kailali darsula Maitadi, and dadal and kanjanpur are the name of districts occupied by province number seven province number seven so all the way there are nine districts all together out of 77 yeah out of 77 uh province number seven occupied nine districts right so you can see in the slide and as well as also in the previous class i have uh, mentioned uh, some of the map of one two three four five six so from the map also from the separation of map from the separate map of province number seven also we can see the name of districts in the map in the map name of districts name of rivers like the name of the tourist area rivers in the map so in the previous class i told you that you have to study the map you can see the map you can see the map and if you see the map at least if you have at last just in previous class also i told you once you can see the atlas and from the atlas we can get very useful information uh the rivers lakes name of bridge tracks uh in this part uh, located right so my daughter strings you can uh, see study the map then you will get very useful information all right okay and after then some of the protected areas and protected areas means and just i told you nepal government has established different protected areas like in different national parks wildlife reserves conservation area to protect the different endangered birds and animals so here is the protected areas uh sukla Fanta wildlife reserves coffee national park are the protected areas and just i told you the protected areas are established because to protect different endangered birds animals vegetation different microorganisms to maintain ecosystem to preserve environment so that protected areas are established okay and after then uh, the some of the major rivers this is located in the province number seven mahakali river city uh, river and budi ganga and this kotkola monaha etc are some of the major rivers some major rivers which is located in the province number seven okay and after then, uh, minor students, uh, you can see the next point here. Okay, uh, after some major rivers, some of the mountains peaks are also located in the province number seven. So some of the name are mentioned in the slide. What are the name of the mountains located in province number seven? So some of the mountains are Opi, Saipal, Nampa, and Yokapad are the popular peaks mountain peaks which is located in the province number seven that means located in sudur Pasim province sudur Pasim province all right okay after then my dear students uh and like uh province number one two three four five six and this province number seven also expand or uh, spread in mountain hill and Torai region Torai region west of nepal this province number seven is expand in mountain hill and tri region west of nepal and as we all know that in nepal there are three geographical region hilly mountain tri so this province of seven is totally expand in mountain 
hill and try region of western nepal all right so these are some of the useful information useful points very useful points of province number seven so okay my dear students uh once again i want to repeat or i want to i'm, I'm going to conclude the province number seven or sudur Pashim province right so and in the province number seven in sudur Pashim province and just uh, i told you that before to discuss about some of the important points of province number seven before to discuss about the some of the important points of province number seven i have mentioned in the slide that one one of the new map of nepal while the government of india claim that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the parts of the india then after then after then nepal government different Nepalese people organization raised the voice against the government of india that limpia dura kalapani and lipu lake are the area of nepal so that is the very important portion of this class today's class and others as i told you some of the important points 